history is being lost today. In the schools, not much is being taught. So museums like the American Heritage Museum are even more important when we have school groups coming through to understand the legacy and the history of what went on in World War I, World War II, Korea and Vietnam. Having these artifacts, whether it's the tanks or airplanes on display in an immersive environment, helps to tell that story for these younger generations. And the opportunity to hear something like a Newport startup, which today I heard for the very first time, and it, it just gives you goosebumps all over, to smell it, to make this history come alive, is just an amazing lesson for everybody to absorb. Uh, a lot of our mission is to honor veterans. Unfortunately, there's no veterans left from World War I and there's precious few from World War II, but we can keep their memory alive. And artifacts like this, whether it's an aircraft or a tank, are there to tell that story. Um, while they're wonderful mechanical pieces and uh, they're incredible to look at, really what they do is they convey the human story to everybody. The Collins Foundation started back in 1979 to preserve living history events. In the mid 80s, the emphasis turned to aviation. And by 1989, the Wings of Freedom Tour started with a B-24 Liberator, a B-17 Flying Fortress, and later a Mustang and B-25 Mitchell touring around the country to share aviation history with America's veterans and with the younger generations. More recently, the Collings Foundation, Inc. started the American Heritage Museum in Stowe, Massachusetts, which is a real amazing museum going from American history, really from the World War I era up to the present day. As part of our expansion, World War I aviation is gonna become a major emphasis. And the aircraft behind me, the Newport 28, was America's first fighter plane. So it's incredibly historic and incredibly important for our heritage that we showcase this, our first fighter plane, which happened to be built in France because we didn't have the aircraft available at that time to go to war. So it tells multiple stories. It tells the preparedness or lack of preparedness that we had going into World War I. It tells the story of the brave av aviators like Douglas Campbell who flew this aircraft in his markings for America's first victory and some of the more well-known aces like Eddie Rickenbacker. It also tells the story of the amazing technology that emerged during World War I and how quickly that technology evolved. Aircraft were only in frontline service for a couple months at a time before being supplemented by the next new design. So there's a lot of incredible stories that really can get captured with this aircraft and with World War I aviation.
1977, when Caroline and I started the Collings Foundation, we never could have imagined that 45 years later we would be in Sweden with the beautiful sunshiny day for the inauguration flight of the Newport 28. Uh, originally and continuously, our mission has been living history, to involve people in history, to be able to hear the sounds, to see the events, to feel the excitement of history, immersive living history. And that's one of the things about aircraft. Seeing statically in a museum doesn't tell the story. Seeing them fly, feel them, and particularly with these aircraft, you feel them in your heart, in your, your chest. It's amazing. Just to see this airplane fly today for the first time is amazing. And we will have events at the American Heritage Museum where people can actually come out and experience this in our living history. And also we're working with a lot of schools now and having them come with field trips to actually see these artifacts and be able to tell stories about them. And in today's world, it's called STEM for reaching out in science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And it's very important because our school systems are not inspiring young people directly. And we hear a lot about people building models in the old days. But today, everybody is doing it on their computer, but it's not three-dimensional. So STEM is allowing us to reach out to people and get them more interested in, in the science and technology and becoming part of the engineering and technical world. The other part of this job, which is really amazing, is to be able to participate in some of these restorations, to see them come to life. And it's been an absolute honor to have Mikael Carlson restore this aircraft to absolute perfection to the way it was. 
and he probably wouldn't like the word perfection because they were never perfect at that time, but restore the aircraft to the way it was in 1918. Uh, so it's been an honor to be part of that project.